Welcome to EIS Services Orientation. The EIS contract for telecommunications and IT services offers a wide variety of services designed to meet your agency's needs now and for many years into the future. The following materials focus on many of the services available and offer you ideas on how to better understand what is relevant to your requirements. In this section, we provide an overview of the toll-free services available under EIS and discuss the features and pricing structure associated with this service. Toll-free service is a service that enables agency customers to make inbound long-distance calls to an agency at no charge to the customer. These are, for example, your 800, 888, 877, 866, etc. prefixes typically used to call a business's customer service or help desk lines. Toll-free service is used in conjunction with the agency's existing voice service and interoperates through the public switched telephone network, PSTN. It is available to support both wireline and wireless calling customers. Toll-free services under EIS include a number of call routing, management, and reporting features. Toll-free can be used to support domestic CONUS, which includes Alaska and Hawaii callers, as well as non-domestic OCONUS callers. TFS calls must terminate at a domestic location, but may originate at any domestic or non-domestic location. Toll-free can be used with a switched IP or dedicated transport service. This slide shows a high-level network diagram of toll-free services. This service can be utilized at multiple agency sites as shown in the picture. TFS uses the agency's existing voice service. It can be circuit switched or IP based to each site. The access arrangement is included for switched access, but must be priced separately for both dedicated and IP access applications. TFS enables agency customers and citizens to call the agency at no charge, regardless of their location. Examples include help desk, customer service departments, and IRS toll-free numbers for taxpayer assistance, etc. Agencies considering this service may also want to review Contact Center Services, CCS, as these two services are often used together. Next, we'll look at some of the features and pricing components of this service. There are a number of routing features available with toll-free service. Some of the key ones are listed here. ANI-based routing is a feature that routes a call based on the number from which the call is made. For example, a call from a Texas area code can be routed to an agency's Texas location, and a call from Washington, D.C. area can be routed to an agency's D.C. location. Announcement-based routing provides a recorded message, such as, All of our operators are currently helping other customers. Please hold for the next available operator. It might be programmed to give the customer wait time or other information. It can be ordered in English and Spanish or another required language. Menu-based routing is a feature that provides prompts to the caller to facilitate routing. For example, a menu list may be set up to route a caller to the customer service department when they press 1 and the billing department when they press 2, and so on. Interactive voice response, IVR routing, is a feature that can be set up to route calls based on voice commands from the caller. For example, say billing to connect with the billing department, or say customer service to speak with a customer service representative. There are also features that enable routing to be established based on the time of day, the day of the week, and even a day of the year. The table lists some of the CLINs associated with the features listed on this slide. Note that most features have an MRC and an NRC component, as well as others that have a usage component. In addition to routing features, there are also standard and customized reporting features available. Examples of these include call status reports, call routing reports, and caller profile reports. An agency can order custom reports to meet their requirements, such as a hold time report or some other aspect of their toll-free service. The table shows the applicable CLINs for the standard reporting features available on EIS. For toll-free service billing, the minimum transport charge is one unit per every six seconds of usage for domestic-to-domestic toll-free calls. So if the charging unit is 10 cents for every six seconds, a 30-second call, which is equal to five charging units, will cost 50 cents. 10 cents times five equals 50 cents. 
For a non-domestic to domestic toll-free call, the minimum transport charge is five units per call. So even if a non-domestic originated call lasts less than 30 seconds, the charge will still be for five units. For toll-free service originating from a payphone, there is a surcharge added per call. This is only for 800 number calls. Switched access originating and terminating is embedded in toll-free service price. Dedicated and IP access arrangements must be added to the cost of this service. In addition to the standard usage option, EIS also offers a flat rate CONUS option. OCONUS or non-domestic pricing would require an ICB CLIN to be defined. CONUS for toll free includes Alaska and Hawaii. The flat rate option includes individual case-based CLINs for either switched access, dedicated access, or IP access toll free transport. For the flat rate option, the agency would negotiate with the vendor to define the maximum minutes for toll-free service calls per month. In this example, the switched access termination option is shown. The CLIN TF04001 is a usage CLIN, so the agency will receive a usage charge based on the duration of each toll-free call. In this example, there are two features added to the service. One is the agency-based routing database feature. There will be an NRC for initial setup and an MRC for use of the feature. At another site, an agency has the menu routing feature, which will also result in an initial NRC setup charge and an MRC for use of the feature. With this option, the cost of access is included with the transport fee. In our second example, the agency wants the CONUS flat rate dedicated access termination option. There is also a flat rate IP access termination option available. Again, any access arrangements would be at an additional cost. Only the switched access option has the access cost embedded in the service. The CLIN TF04002 is the MRC for the flat rate service option. The agency will receive a monthly charge based on the flat rate minutes per month for inbound toll-free calls. This is negotiated between the vendor and the agency. In addition, there is an overage MRC CLIN TF04402, which will be the contracted price per unit for charges incurred beyond the flat rate negotiated minutes. In this example, the agency wants to add the interactive voice response IVR feature to the service. There will be an NRC for the IVR application, which can be either a shared or dedicated resource. If it is a dedicated resource, there will be an MRC per port charge, and if it is a shared resource, there will be a usage charge. At another site, an agency has the menu routing feature, which will also result in an initial NRC setup charge and an MRC for use of the feature. In this case, the termination access is not embedded or bundled in the cost of the service. To put it all together for toll-free service, there will be the basic transport charge, which may be used switched, dedicated, or IP access, and can be usage-based or a flat rate. There will be a usage charge for any overages incurred with the flat rate options. In addition, any 800 number toll-free calls from a payphone will incur a per-call surcharge. Then there are any added features, which could be either additional NRCs, MRCs, or usage-based charges. These together are the total charges that can be part of the toll-free service. In addition, for any transport besides switched access, an agency may also need to consider the additional charge for the agency's access arrangement, IP or dedicated. The standard provisioning SLA for toll-free service is 45 days.